Hey, Tommy from the Run Testers, and welcome to another Running Shoe Versus. In this video, we are going to be comparing the Socony Endorphin Speed 4 and the Hocker Mac X. Let's have a look. Socony Endorphin Speed 4 costs £180 or $170. It weighs 239 grams or 8.4 ounces for men in a size 8 and the drop is 8 millimetres. The Hocker Mac X costs £160 or $180. It weighs 242 grams or 8.5 ounces for men in a size 8 and the drop is 5 millimetres. The Zocony Endorphin Speed 4 takes learnings from its hugely popular predecessors by making a few modifications to improve the ride. The most important of those is a re-engineered wing nylon plate to provide additional reinforcement while maintaining flexibility. There's also an updated mesh upper design that aims to give a more secure fit than the slightly roomy Endorphin Speed 3 and a new lattice outsole rubber to improve grip and durability. The shoe still uses the brand's Power on PB phone to ensure a high level of propulsion when picking up the pace, combining that with a smooth ride thanks to the impressive speed roll technology. The Mac X is a shoe that Hocker fans have been eagerly awaiting, designed to take learnings from the impressively versatile Mac range and combine that with a propulsive carbon plate. That plate sits between two layers of foam, EVA to provide a supportive ride and a new PEBA section to improve responsiveness and rebound. That combination is built to feel soft for easy sessions but with plenty of pop for faster efforts. Other features include a Creel jacket upper for breathability and comfort, a gusseted tongue and a generous layer of outsole rubber for grip and durability. Comes to the fit of the two shoes, I was happy using my normal size. I'm a UK 9 with Socony, it's a US 10. With the Hoka, it's a US 9.5. General Hokas have a slightly tighter fit as a result because of the way the US and UK sizes uh, scale across, but they're also quite narrow shoes in general. That usually suits me. I like, have a narrow foot and I do like the fit of the Mac X all round. It was comfortable around heel and midfoot and I had enough room in the toe box, but it is a fairly narrow shoe. Might be something to look out for if you have a wide foot. Socony is a slightly wider fit, which actually was a problem for me with the Endorphin Speed 3, which was a bit too wide and I had some heel slippage i haven't had those problems with the endorphin speed 4 though so i was completely happy in my normal running shoe size with it and i'd say in general that's what i'd go for but i would look out for the narrowness of the hoka mac x if you have a wide foot so when it comes to fit i ran in my regular running shoe size in both these shoes which is a uk eight and a half that's what i go for in hokas that is what i would normally go for in socrates and overall i would say go true to size in these shoes the big difference here i think on fit they both have sort of good dialed in good control across the midfoot. I think the heels hold well on both of these shoes. I have no trouble with any kind of weird movement. I get good lockdown, all of that kind of stuff. The one thing I will say, when you've got both shoes on side by side, you really feel the difference is the Hokers, like Hokers do, they come up a little bit snug. They're a little bit tighter, particularly where that sort of big toe knuckle sits and into that kind of toe box area. That is a bit narrow. If you've got wide feet or you like things a little bit roomy, you might want to go half a size up there. The Hokers definitely offer a more snug fit than the Endorphin Pro. The Endorphin Pro have a little bit more room across the top of the toe box. There's definitely more wiggle room. The uppers flex a bit more. There's a little bit more lengthwise as well. So overall, the roomier fit is in the Socony Endorphin Speed 4. The Hoka Mac X have that sort of slightly more dialed in race fit. And if you don't like it too snug and too narrow, you certainly might want to consider looking at going half a size up in those shoes. So the fit for me in these two shoes, I'm a size eight in the UK. These are both size eights. The Socony Endorphin Speed, uh, I've had no issues with at all. It's a little bit less roomy than the Socony Endorphin Speed 3, which a lot of people had a problem with because it had quite a roomy upper and people found it hard to get a lockdown fit in. Um, I didn't really have a problem with that shoe. I've got fairly average size feet, um, but equally I've had no issues with this either. The size, my size in this is has been absolutely fine and it's been very comfortable uh, to wear. The Hocker Mac X, uh, I um, haven't had any issues in it before. I know that it is a little bit narrower than um, uh, some people like. Um, it's fine for my feet. I've had no issues with this shoe. It's been very comfortable, but I, I can tell it's a more narrow shoe than the Socony Dolphin Speed 4. So just take that in consideration if you're looking to buy the shoe and you've got wide feet. So I've just done my side-by-side -side mile, speed four on the left foot. I've got the Hoka Mac X on the right foot. First thing to say, it's been a while since I've run in the Mac X with any kind of intent. And I've forgotten how much I really like this shoe. It's, I find it really lively, it's energetic. It's got that good combination of the I like, which is sort of a nice rocket ride, but with a midsole that doesn't sink too much. It comes back really quite quickly. There's an immediacy and a kind of high turnover clip to the Hoka Mac X, which I find there's kind of plenty of spring in there. There's plenty of energy from it. 
and actually conversely when you put it up against the speed 4 what you notice is the speed 4 actually has a slightly softer slightly more cushioned platform it feels a bit wider the one thing you really feel is that hoka kind of rockering and the way that midsole it almost creates like a the only way I could sort of think about it is like a bowl of foam underfoot. So when you land in the hill, you get rolled right through on the rock and you can feel the foam engage really quickly as it rolls you through. The Speed 4 land a little bit flatter with a little bit more cushion. They are light and energetic and what you get back is a little bit more bounce. You know, I think you know the foam comes back when that kind of plate kicks in and then off you go. So overall, I think the Speed 4 is going to offer you a little bit more cushion protection for those kind of longer, slower runs. The Hoka Mac X, they feel a little bit more direct. They feel a bit more immediate as a result. And yeah, I think you're gonna to have to be running quite well in those shoes to really enjoy that over longer distances. I certainly think these are both kind of good, capable, fast, punchy shoes that are good for those sort of speedier workouts. If I was choosing to go slightly slower, I would go speed four. And if you're looking for a versatile shoe that can cope across the distances, my suggestion probably would be that the speed four is gonna handle that a bit better. At the top paces, I think the real difference here is whether or not you like that sort of more immediate rock and ride with a sort of slightly more direct or a sort of, yes, foam not kind of sinking so much coming back quickly, you've got to go Mac X. If you want something that is a bit wider, a bit more stable, a bit more cushioned, maybe a wider, sort of more reliable platform to run off, then I think the uh, Speed 4 is going to be it. But overall, I, I think these shoes are both really lively, really punchy. And I think for those sort of top end workouts that you might be doing, you know, marathon pace intervals, faster than marathon pace intervals, I think both these shoes can do a really good job. For a half marathon race, perhaps I would go Mac X. I think they might give you a little bit more kind of life. But yeah, I will sum up which one of these I would actually go for in the verdict in a second. So these two shoes are part of uh, the world of super trainers or plated trainers that have um, a designed for doing daily training in, but also to be to run a bit faster in as well um and the speed series has been one of the most popular ones that we've ever tested um when it comes to super trainers it is con continued to be a really really solid all-rounder uh, training shoe that you can do pretty much everything in uh, it skews more towards the speed side of things but you can use it for easier runs you can use it for daily runs some people race in it. I know a lot of people that buy this shoe as their one shoe and they don't have any other shoes. They just maybe a new runner or maybe just don't want to have loads of shoes. Uh, and they tend to buy the Sogany Duffin Speed, uh, early versions of it, uh, for everything. And they'll they'll train in for a marathon with it and they'll, they'll eventually do the marathon in it. And that's a fantastic uh, example of what this shoe can do. It really can tick off a lot of things. Um, it really it allows you to pick up the pace nicely it's got a lovely fluid motion it's quite poppy um and it's just a really solid shoe but if, even if uh, at those easier paces it still feels very comfortable it doesn't feel like it's forcing you to go fast um so it's fantastic all round a daily shoe um and still one the top ones that you can buy at the moment the hocker mac x is an interesting one because um hocker mac series so the hocker mac 4 5 and 6 which i've not tested yet um, was, has been one of our favourite all-rounder shoes, daily shoes for versatility, running faster in, uh, and even competes with the plated Sockney Dolphin Speed uh, 3 um, and possibly the 4. Um, so we were very excited when the Hocker Max X was released because we thought that's going to take the already fantastic Hocker Max series and really propel it into being a fantastic super trainer. Um, in fact, it didn't really do that. Uh, the shoe is more, it, it doesn't really gain a lot from having that plate in it um, over the um, existing uh, Hocker Max series. Um, and when it first came out, I really wasn't that big a fan of it. I, I think I was hoping for a lot more from this shoe than what I actually got. Over time, I've worn to it and I've started to realize the uses for it. And it normally comes into play when I'm doing marathon training. So I wouldn't use the shoe for easy runs because I don't feel it's that beneficial for easy runs um, and when you're running really fast in it it just doesn't seem to have the versatility and the speed of the speed four um, but what i tend to use it for now is i have a lot of sessions which are running at a fairly consistent steady pace it's not my easy pace i'm not racing um, because i'm marathon training i'm running at a consistently challenging pace but i'm not really going too hard and that's i think where the shoe comes in because it's quite a nice cruiser it feels quite efficient. It feels quite fluid when you're running in it. 
but you can't really do a lot else in it. So I wouldn't say it's the most versatile shoe in the world, but it does do quite well at those consistent cruising paces, um, especially when you're sort of doing marathon training runs where you're not going all out, but equally you're not going easy or really slow as well. So they, on paper they do look quite similar, but in reality they have different uses. And I think it really comes down to that versatility because the uh, Speed 4 is just, a fantastically versatile shoe one of those versatile shoes we've ever tested Ockham Max X isn't really a versatile shoe and it doesn't really gain a lot from having that plate in it so um, it's not if you're looking for a plated super trainer um, th there's not really m many reasons why you'd get the Ockham Max X whereas the Socking Dolphin Speed 4 still maintains its place as a really really good versatile super trainer um last thing i'll say on these is the outsole on these the i definitely prefer the outsole on the socking dolphin speed 4 it's got this new waffle lattice design or i think that's what it's called uh solid great really good at gripping wet surfaces um not had any issues with it at all Ockham Mac X, it's okay. Uh, it's not as good as the outsole on the Socrates Dolphin Speed 4. I haven't slipped in it or anything, but I do feel that it's just a little bit smoother uh, and not as grippy as on the Socrates Dolphin Speed 4. So I've done a lot of running in both of these shoes, and I think they're both pretty impressive super trainers all round. I think you get a slightly different feel from them, though. They are, while they are both very versatile shoes and very comfortable and useful for easy runs and recovery runs, as well as having that pop for speed work that you expect from a plated training shoe like this, I think they sit at slightly different ends of the scale when it comes to super trainers. Speed 4, I think, is a very versatile shoe and a very quick shoe. Like, it really is good for fast, hard efforts, I find, whether that's holding a good speed for extended periods on long tempo runs or something like that, or going for all-out reps it has quite a nice grounded feel like even though it is a pretty high stack shoe you do get a good feel from the ground from it it rolls you through your foot strike really nicely with the speed roll rocker and you get a pretty good amount of pop from the nylon plate and the power run pb foam i think the mac x is more skewed towards the easy end of things it is a very comfortable and stable shoe for cruising around in at relaxed paces you do then get a little bit of pop from the uh, from the piba foam on the top layer there and the plate in the shoe but it's not that much. I think it's got a slightly duller feeling underfoot, I think, than the Speed. It's another quite well rockered shoe, but again, I think the rocker's a bit faster, a bit more aggressive with the Speed. So with the Hoka, I really enjoyed it most for kind of fairly relaxed runs. And you know, it's good for long runs. It can do some slightly faster stuff, like pushing up towards kind of steady pace, tempo pace, maybe even marathon pace. But really, I found it a bit big and not that kind of lively and aggressive when I didn't want it to do the faster stuff. Whereas I think the Speed has that greater range when it comes to the faster end of things. And I tried on both shoes at the same time for a short run. I felt that very clearly, really. I think the speed just feels more nimble and aggressive. It feels like a much lighter shoe. And actually, the difference in weight isn't huge, but the speed feels like a lighter, more nimble, more aggressive shoe and has a faster transition onto the forefoot. Hoka just feels a little bit more ponderous to me. And it, it might just be down to it being a slightly denser material underfoot. And maybe if you're putting a bit more force into it, if you're slightly heavier running, you might get a bit more life out of it. But I didn't really feel like I was engaging the plate and the foams in the shoe, as well as with the speed. Even when I was running quick in the Hoka, it felt fine and I moved through okay in it but didn't really have that lively feel I expect from a super trainer when I'm going to use it for fast runs really like I say it excelled for me at more relaxed paces and long runs speed can do those runs though and I think that's the difference between them I think the speed's got that wider range because it is comfortable and relaxed at easy paces but then it has that more aggressive feel that lighter faster feeling when you are going to up the pace <laughs> Okay, my verdict on these two shoes, pretty easy really. Uh, I'm gonna go for Socking Dolphin Speed 4 all of the time, uh, just because if you're gonna buy one of these shoes, you're buying it for that versatility, you're buying it for uh, having an all-rounder quality of doing lots of different things. And ultimately, because of that, you're actually saving yourself money because you you don't need to buy loads of different shoes. You can do it all in the Socking Dolphin Speed 4. A lot of people will probably buy lots of other shoes as well as the Speed 4, but you don't have to uh, if you just want to get one pair of shoes and you might be racing it and things as well. The Mac X doesn't have that versatility. If you buy this shoe, you're probably not going to be doing easy runs in it. You're probably not going to be racing in it. Um, so it it's a bit of a niche shoe or a bit of a general shoe, which doesn't really um, succeed in any real real area for me it's just all right uh, which is not what you want if you're buying a plated super trainer you want something that really does something and delivers those efficiency gains um and gives you a bit more versatility so i'd definitely go for socking dolphin speed four uh if i was if i was picking between these two shoes even if it was a bit more expensive other options out there i'd say the new balance rebel v4 is a really good option it's not plated but it's very versatile, very light feeling, very comfortable to run in, good at easy runs, good at faster runs, uh, and well worth looking at if you're looking for sort of an all-rounder and maybe don't want a plate in it. Also, you've got the Hocker Max series. Now, I haven't tested the Hocker Max 6. Uh, should be getting that soon, but 
the 4 and 5 massive fan of um, and actually prefer to the Hockenback X when it comes to versatility and training especially if you're doing faster sessions but you want something you can still run at a nice comfortable pace at. So picking between these two shoes, for me, the speed is the winner. I think it's the more versatile, the more impressive super trainer all around. It's the one and stick in my rotation as a general trainer that you can use for pretty much everything and maybe just round it out with slightly faster carbon shoes for races and key sessions and maybe a even more cushioned, slightly more relaxed shoe for some easy runs. I think the Hoka is a nice shoe. It fills the same role in the rotation. It is a do-it-all daily trainer, but it's not one that I feel really impressed in the same way the speed does, especially when it comes to faster runs. I think the Mac X is a great shoe for just cruising around daily training runs, but I don't know, it doesn't feel like you're getting enough from it to really make it worth the outlay to do that because I think there's loads of shoes that are great for cruising around at relaxed paces on daily runs and when you've got all that super trainer tech in it, you want it to then also be explosive and impressive at fast paces and I don't think the Mac X really is, certainly not to the extent of the speed anyway. I think the speed is very expensive but it's worth the outlay because it can do all the things you expect from a super trainer. It is a very versatile shoe, a great shoe to use for any kind of run really, whereas the Mac X just feels like it lacks that top end speed for me. Like It's a big shoe maybe that's part of it and I think maybe the way the Hoka's are planning to adjust the shoe with the second version maybe stick a bit more of the Piva foam in there line up a little bit give it a slightly more punchy feel when it comes to the fast end of things it's a nice shoe to use for cruising around but I just don't think it delivers at the sharp end of things and when you're spending a lot of money on a super trainer of a lot of tech I think you need that to make it worth the outlay and that's what the speed does so I'd be picking the Sockany Endorphin Speed myself. Verdict then, and if you've been watching the channel for any time at all, you'll know that I'm a massive fan of the Sockley and Dolphin Speed. Was of the three, absolutely love the four as well. I think it's just a really good, well, I just think it's a wonderful, versatile daily training shoe that can cope with pretty much anything you throw at. And I wasn't really quite expecting the Mac X to give it that much competition in my affections. But having just done that side by side, and having looked at kind of how the Mac X performs overall, it's a much closer call than I really thought it would be. I think these are both really very good, capable, fast daily trainers. They're both excellent shoes. I've enjoyed running in them both. I was a big fan of the Mac X as well. If it comes down to which shoe I think I would choose overall, for me, I just think the Sockney Endorphin Speed 4 probably edges it overall on versatility. Does that make it kind of worthwhile for the extra money you're going to pay for it? Oh, I think probably if you're looking for something that's going to give you a bit more cushion protection, that can do a little bit of the slower pace is better with a bit more room, a bit more overall foot comfort. Uh, maybe the Speed 4 is going to be the shoe. I think that's the one to go for if that's your kind of ride profile. If you like things kind of really sort of quite aggressively rockered with a lower drop, you want a more immediate ride that feels kind of good, that kind of clip along fast kind of uh, responsive ride, then maybe the Mac X is going to be your shoe. But be aware that it is going to be more dialed in. It's going to be snugger unless you go half a size up. I think if I was going to go and run more than sort of two hours on feet, which shoe would protect me the most and give me the most energy, that kind of perfect combination of sort of balance cushion, but propulsion and protection, I think the Speed 4 is going to do it. If I was going to go and race a half marathon, uh, do you know what? I think maybe I would go for the Mac X. X in this shoe it might even just be livelier and with more clip along but it probably wouldn't protect me beyond that so I think it's a really difficult one to choose here actually I think these two shoes both have really strong merits I think the choice is going to come down to whether or not you like slightly more cushioned and protective with a sort of slightly lower stack or you want that kind of big rocket ride that's more responsive if you want the cushion protection and the speed as well go for the speed four if you really like that kind of rocket responsive rides feels a little bit more direct even though it's got a bigger stack than i would go for the mac x put a gun to my head and say which shoe are you going to run the rest of your life in kieran out of these two shoes it's going to be the speed four i think it just has more in its locker it's got more range i think it's overall a bit more comfortable with more natural feeling on the foot yeah so for me it would be the speed four but I honestly don't think you can go far wrong with either of these two shoes. That's it from us on these two shoes. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click that little bell. And if you're going to Catch and Blow, you can find a link to our podcast, which comes out at the end of each month. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.